guys. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Hauser. I, I work for TypeSafe, and uh, today I'm going to work. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the new version of Play, uh, which is actually a joint product of uh, TypeSafe and Sanex CD. Before actually I talk about Play itself, I figured it's a, a good idea to kind of overview what's out there in terms of uh, uh, kind of like Scala. Um, web frameworks. Uh, I think uh, as a Scala developer, I feel like we are really lucky that uh, we have all these kind of good options. Um, uh, somebody at the recent uh, New York Scala meetup mentioned that, uh, oh, I mean, it's a bummer. Like, I mean, we have all these tools, but uh, none of them are really perfect. And uh, you can be too excited about that. Uh, I feel the kind of uh, the opposite way. I think we have so many cool and rich tools. And considering like other options, uh, I still f uh, feel like we have something to bring. Uh, to the table. But uh, without further ado, let's see uh, the, the current uh, kind of landscape. Uh, the first uh, I would like to mention is Unfiltered. Uh, we had just a talk about it. It's essentially like a small um, a web toolkit uh, to kind of express like, uh, I don't know, web uh, concerns. The, uh, the other kind of uh, new player in town is Web Blue Eyes. Uh, it's a fantastic framework. It's a lightweight, uh, highly asynchronous um, web framework with like Mongo and uh, and other um, sugar. Draft Wizard is, uh, on the other hand, is most like a Java uh, uh, glue framework, but it uh, has like a really cool um, Scala integration uh, module. The next one I would mention is Spraycan, which is also brand new. Uh, that's essentially uh, an HTTP uh, layer on top of Akka. Uh, the next one I would mention is Calatra, which is essentially Sinatra in uh, Scala. Uh, built on the, uh, the Cerebet API. Uh, and the next one, uh, which was like uh, for, for a long time the only player in town, is Lyft, uh, which is uh, kind of like a stateful uh, web framework, full stack uh, web, uh, web framework, and of course there is Play. As I mentioned, I think all of these tools are uh, kind of like really cool. Um, that said, uh, there, uh, these are the three that I personally like. And the main reason is that like, they're sharing certain characteristics with uh, Play, uh, namely that uh, uh, they're using, uh, some of them are using Akka or implementing like WebSocket support and uh, built on Netty instead of, like, for example, the Servet API. And in case of Draft Wizard, it's like, uh, uh, kind of like Java-based, so it's really easy to just use it from the Java side. And uh, most importantly, all of these frameworks are stateless. OK. Uh, so I guess the question is, uh, so why, uh, why we needed like another framework? Uh, Play 1.0 uh, had like um, uh, kind of Scala support as well implemented as a, as a plugin. So why the big rewrite? Why not using one of these uh, awesome tools? And I guess like what we see in, in, in Scala world, uh, like we have all these kind of really cool web tools and they're kind of exploring the, the web landscape from slightly different uh, uh, points of view and, and like I think we kind of see this kind of uh, exploration taking place now and I'm thinking that uh, in the long run I think we're gonna diverge again uh, but the main reason why why uh, we thought that like uh, creating a new uh, framework is uh, useful because our main focus is not necessarily on uh, like features but more like providing a really good user experience in uh, in, in our case it really means like uh, not user experience but developer experience we really try hard to make simple tasks, uh, 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 simple and hard tasks uh, uh, also should be available. Uh, hard, tasks, hard tasks should be also uh, 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 something that developers uh, should be able to uh, re uh, solve with, uh, with the framework. And uh, as I mentioned, like our main focus is on developer happiness. But what, what, what does it really mean? Uh, what it really means that, like for example, we build the whole framework on SBT, but we tried our best to hide some of the uh, the complexities of SBT. We uh, created like a, a kind of like a documentation that's available uh, for for every developer by just working on a site. We created like a developer console which you can use to uh, create like a distribution of uh, a play application, but also just to run a developer server. So we really tried our best just to uh, make common tasks easy, but also uh, provide uh, ways to uh, tackle hard problems. 
But let's see the, the main features. And uh, because the time is short, I'm just going to really <laughs> gonna give you guys uh, like a short like introduction of what's out there. But what you, what you really can do is just uh, download the framework and check out the, the sample applications. But uh, one of the uh, key features for me is that uh, Play is providing not just a, a really nice Scala API, but a Java API as well. Uh, I consider this like a big uh, deal because this, uh, the Java API not only opening the door for Java developers, but also it allows, say, like a closure developer, a JRuby developer to use Play. Uh, it's a stateless framework. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I believe a uh, web framework should be stateless. It's full stack, but uh, especially in this particular release, we tried our best to uh, turn the framework as modular and ex extensible as possible. Uh, I guess um, uh, what, what we're really trying to achieve is that like, if the current kind of menu is uh, not something that uh, you would like to eat from, then you should be able to add new items uh, to it and eat the whole thing. Uh, in this particular release, we try to bring the browser-based error reporting to the next level. I'm not sure if you saw this feature with the Play 1.0, but essentially the idea is that um, you're making changes to your classes and then you switch to the developer console, uh, hit refresh, and if there is any uh, problem in, uh, in your code, then you're going to see the error highlighted within the browser. And in this particular release, now this includes JavaScript as well. So what it means in practice uh, is that uh, front-end developers are going to uh, use exactly the same experience that back-end developers. Uh, so you can uh, write your uh, coffee script or uh, or just normal JavaScript, uh, and then uh, get it compiled with the Google uh, Closure uh, compiler. And if there is an error in the JavaScript, uh, then we get, uh, we're actually really using um, Google's uh, Closure's output, and we're going to really represent that in the browser the same VSV classes. So the net result is that like a front-end developer is going to experience exactly the same thing as like a back-end developer. We really try to make sure that like the front end experience is as smooth as uh, the kind of the back end experience. Uh, the next uh, item I would mention is um, that in this in this release uh, we made sure that like as many parts of the framework are kind of statically checked uh, as possible. So what it means is that like we providing type safe uh, templates, but also type safe uh, routes. Uh, the, 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 the rat uh, uh, kind of idea is um, essentially what you have in like Rails where you can define the, like your, uh, I don't know, URLs and, and the corresponding actions in, in a file. But uh, in case of play, this information is type checked. So if you mis, uh, mistype, say, uh, like your controller name or the controller method, then you're going to experience this, uh, the same browser error based, uh, uh, browser based error reporting that we classes and uh, coffee script or CSS as well. As I mentioned, uh, uh, now uh, JavaScript is also compiled using G uh, Google Closure uh, Compiler, but it also includes uh, coffee script and less. Uh, Play uh, 2.0 is uh, built on uh, Akka, so we, uh, of course, work closely with the uh, Akka team. Uh, what it means that, like, uh, not only just the framework is built on Akka, but uh, users have easy access to various Akka features. So it's really easy to say map, like, an Akka uh, message to, like, a, I don't know, like a, a, a response, and then you can send data uh, asynchronously to the browser. And, uh, and most importantly, we tr uh, try uh, to provide all these goodies for uh, asynchronous data processing that includes like streaming, comment, uh, web socket, and, uh, and uh, kind of generic uh, advanced uh, input I.O. processing. One of the main uh, differences between Play 1.0 and 2.0 is that uh, Play 1.0 heavily was relying on uh, like Java bytecode en enhancement. And all this kind of magic was uh, replaced uh, with Scala. So we're really happy that uh, Scala exists and uh, we can use all the cool features. And um, Scala is, over, of course, also used, uh, for example, to provide uh, this kind of advanced input uh, I.O. handling. Uh, we implemented uh, the iterative uh, I.O. Uh, kind of uh, 
a library or a, I think design pattern in Haskell. I'm not like a Haskell hacker, so I might be wrong here. But like I think the uh, the ETH IO and uh, and um, like at the future uh, implementations like not really reaching like a high number. So probably that was something that uh, we should make sure that like at one point they uh, we can merge them or uh, diverge and we can have like commons. I don't know ETH or <laughs> something. But anyway, so yeah, we, we have yeah, our own iterative implementation. Uh, we also have uh, like an integrated functional and unit test runner uh, because uh, in 2011 or 12, uh, right now, uh, not everyone is building on uh, databases, but still, of course, uh, there are many databases out there. Uh, we provide uh, optional support, or ORM support, and DB evolutions if you're using databases. But also, we have uh, various like helper APIs to uh, help with everyday tasks, like including uh, OAuth or form handling or JSON or stuff like that. And uh, because we built on SBT, um, uh, like the dependency management uh, is, um, is using uh, IV. Uh, but it also means that like uh, now a play project is published as like a normal Maven artifact. And you can, in fact, just uh, use uh, Play as a library, which uh, I will show you guys shortly. How to do it. So this, this uh, uh, screenshot just illustrates this kind of in-browser error reporting that I was talking about. Uh, this one's showing you uh, kind of just like a normal controller code. The next one is showing you like uh, when there is a compilation error within your routes. And something uh, is misspelled there. And uh, this is uh, for temp uh, template compilation errors. Uh, as you can see, uh, all these various aspects of your application presented in like a unified way. And this is for like JavaScript. Uh, the next thing I would like to show you guys uh, is that um, uh, because we have like a really strong Java and uh, Scala API, we tr try to make sure that like we present uh, these kind of sample applications in both languages, so you really can have like a direct comparison and uh, choose what uh, what you like. So this is uh, like the same application implemented in Java and Scala, using slightly different uh, APIs. But the main thing is that. Uh, all APIs uh, that we're providing available, both in Scala and Java. The generic strategy that we're using, I think that could be, uh, I guess, like a separate talk, like how to create, like, uh, I don't know, good uh, Scala and Java APIs. Uh, the, the idea that we have is that, like, we implement, like, an internal API in Scala, and then we expose it in uh, both uh, Java and Scala. I don't know whether that's the best way to go, but. Uh, I saw other uh, kind of ideas where, like, I don't know, people uh, uh, created like a Scala API which had the, the Java methods in it as well, like uh, as Java or, uh, or stuff like that, like uh, using various naming conventions, uh, stuff like that. Personally, uh, I feel like uh, with this approach, you really can have like a clean API design. And uh, I mean, at least from the end user, it's, uh, it, it will be certainly better than. Uh, dealing with, uh, like, say, like, I'm a Java developer and I have to deal with, like, a Scala API, uh, and then just, like, oh, I have to ignore these methods because these methods are for the Scala uh, developer. So that's why we ended up uh, using this uh, wrapper approach. Uh, I mentioned that uh, now we ship, uh, like, a, 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 with, a, like, a functional test runner. Uh, this is available uh, for for both languages, but essentially what you see here is that uh, in this particular example, we're using uh, spec, but like uh, Scala should uh, be uh, also working just fine. So you can see we just fire up like uh, a test server, we're using HTML unit, uh, which is uh, uh, just like a headless browser, but uh, you could inject anything else, and in that case, it would, uh, the, the test itself would run in a browser. And then you can test your application in, in context, including JavaScript, of course. So I'm going to show you guys a few examples. First, I would like to show you uh, how to extend the framework just really briefly, or what, uh, what kind of aspects of the framework you can really extend or replace. Uh, so one of the projects I would like to show you guys is called like Play Mini. Uh, here, what, uh, 
what, what we tried to do was like, instead of using this uh, router, built-in router, we pretty much just uh, uh, reused unfiltered uh, library and boom, uh, the end result is that you can use play as like a normal uh, kind of uh, dependence on your project while you, you still have access to all the, uh, the goodies that uh, play has, including all these kind of as uh, asynchronous uh, processing techniques. Um, and so this is just like a standard uh, like a chart that uh, you can add to your project as a dependency uh, and then uh, you can build like unfiltered like applications uh, where, where like you like this is the kind of the unfiltered part but like there are some play mini specific stuff there as well. So here we can just replace the, the router mechanism of play. In the other example I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to just plug in uh, like a new kind of uh, data store. So in this particular case, uh, I'm going to show you the, the Redis uh, plugin. Uh, so after you just configure uh, your plugin, then uh, uh, that you can use uh, uh, place internal cache uh, system, but not the backend instead of like an in-memory cache. Now it's going to be Redis uh, based. It's using uh, Jedis and Sedis as the uh, the drivers and in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, paragraph you can see how to uh, how to actually access the plugin from within your code both from Java and Scala as you can see the Scala version is much easier to use uh, it's also worth mentioning that like we had just a talk on uh, type classes uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, the, the APIs that uh, we build using the typecast uh, kind of design pattern. So this import here uh, is uh, bringing like an application uh, type class into the scope and that's uh, essentially what, uh, what the plugin is using under the hood. But otherwise it's just basically we accessing that plugin and then we're just using uh, Sedis uh, to uh, uh, to deal with Redis. So, and this is just a plugin, but it's really easy to um, to plug in uh, whatever it's database or templating language uh, you have. Uh, you don't really need to um, kind of uh, hack the framework because you can use uh, either the extension points, uh, which can be just hooks uh, in the application lifecycle, or you can use the plugin mechanism to add your own uh, stuff. There are already like 10, 15 plugins available, but I think the number will grow uh, shortly after the, the framework is actually released. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys, um, it's a Comet uh, based application. And So uh, what you can see here is that we be using uh, place uh, enumerator uh, uh, to um, kind of define like a, uh, using play enumerator to uh, get uh, like a, the, the date refreshed, uh, which is coming from like a play promise and then Essentially, what's happening here is like the OK, uh, like we essentially saying that like uh, take that enum enumerator, process it through Comet, and then uh, provide all these kind of chunk results to the browser. And then what what's gonna happen is that like uh, from uh, like we're gonna ha like open up like this uh, Comet channel, and then uh, the clock is gonna be updated based on this guy. So I'm going to demonstrate that. But before I do so, I figured I quickly just can show you guys uh, the kind of the developer console I was talking about. So, uh, so these are the available commands, play specific commands that uh, we uh, created. Uh, but let's run the application. So I'm starting up the application, and I can uh, 
now the compilation is uh, taking place and um, here's the comment clock which is uh, updated based on like this guy. Okay. Uh, I, why I'm here, I guess I can show you again this kind of experience that uh, yeah, I was talking about. So I just made a typo in my code. I hit refresh and uh, now it's complaining that like I, I have a typo, so I'm going to fix that. I hit refresh. And hopefully it's going to compile it. Yeah, so that's right there. And, uh, and also the documentation, for example, is right here. So if you work on any application and you fire up uh, the, uh, the kind of the developer console, then you have access to uh, the reference manual. But also we included, for example, the Scala and the Java API as well. So you have access to those as well. This is just a nice addition. Um, and what else? Yeah, I'm, I would like to show you another example. This is yeah. this is going to be like a chat application implemented uh, with the uh, actors. And all right, so before I fire up the application, I will just really go through this shortly because the time is short. Uh, I will just really. Uh, try to talk about this briefly, but essentially uh, what's happening here is that like, uh, so uh, we're sending a, m a message to this uh, chat room actor, uh, which is like a join uh, message. And then uh, we map the results to like a play enumerator. And then we take that enumerator, sorry guys, like uh, this guy. And then we take that enumerator and uh, process it through like a comet uh, kind of en enumerity. And then we create this kind of chunk response again, uh, which will be uh, updated over time. As you can see, this is like an asynchronous uh, result. And basically, this is going to be the, the kind of like the, the comet uh, kind of channel that uh, the application can use to push uh, 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 messages uh, to the browser. And we have like another uh, kind of method here, which is just like a normal synchronous message, but it's uh, sending the message to the actor. I'm also just going to show you guys how it looks from the router point of view. So you can see that like uh, we have like a same uh, method that's mapped to say. And, uh, and also we have the, the main thing, which is just index. Right, so so this is the chat room, and I'm going to say hello, and then I'm going to open this other guy. I'm going to join, and I'm going to say hi. Okay, so like I mean, it's not nothing super interesting, but I guess it just demonstrates the point that uh, it's fairly easy just to uh, create like actor and comment-driven applications uh, with play. What is used on the hood? Web sockets or long polling? Yeah, I mean for this, like it's uh, long polling, oh, right. but th there is like a web so uh, like the, the exactly the same example is implemented in web socket, uh, oh. as well. So uh, th there is a version like that. So what's, uh, what's missing from the release? Uh, uh, we're working on the server support. We, we, we're having actually technical difficulties uh, providing good server support, mainly because the server, uh, even like the 3.0 uh, API is so limited. Uh, so we actually have to figure out like what we would like to uh, kind of like cut from the server support because not, o o not uh, every feature will be supported through the server. Uh, API and also like uh, we're going to provide like a web-based test runner. So these are the features that we deferred for uh, 2.1 and I guess like uh, the question is when is it going to be released? Uh, 
2.0 is going to be released really soon, like one week soon. Or hopefully, like really just in a few days. OK, so any questions? Uh, so the question was uh, uh, whether uh, someone can use like a regular JavaScript library. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the only uh, thing is that like we're using a Google C a Closure compiler just to kind of uh, kind of compile, make your JavaScript faster. But you can use uh, uh, jQuery or whatever library you want to use. So there is no restriction there. Uh, in terms of uh, like I don't know t templating uh, solutions like 1.0 came with like a kind of like a groovy based uh, tram templating solution, and uh, somebody kind of re-implemented that for 2.0 because it's so easy just to plug in your own templating stuff. So you can even use that if that's what you prefer. But 2.0 by default is using the Scala uh, kind of templating solution. But it's just an option, like so, like the, the because the whole thing it became just more like a kind of like a core architecture uh, and a bunch of plugins, like whether you're going to use like uh, Scalate or must, uh, Mustache or whatever you prefer. It's really up to you. The, like, the framework is the fat line going to be in your way. It's just it comes with like a kind of like a template, but you can actually even uh, make sure that you're not installing the jar if you're not using it.